Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's season four, episode seven of Greenleaf, entitled Reunited. I'll give a brief recap of the episode and have the reviews at the end. I'll also put in the minute marks in the comments, just in case you've already seen the episode and you just want the review. That's all coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. <laughs> Episode starts off with Grace wanting to know where AJ is. So she's calling Sophia, asking her if she just happens to know maybe his whereabouts and where he is. And Sophia is telling her, I don't know where he is. If I find out anything, I'll be sure to let you know. They hang up on the phone and it pans out with a camera view and we see AJ is sitting on Sophia's bed. So she was covering for AJ. We then cut to Charity in the restroom, looking in the mirror, getting dressed, doing her makeup, and gloating, giving a fake sermon about Grace's mishaps, about being genuine, about being true, lies, and saying, oh yes, this is something that you must confess, and it's a shame that you do this, and it's a shame that you do that, really sulking in the news about grace and making it seem like everybody else has mishaps and sins and things to testify about except for her that is the energy that she's giving out and as she's doing that we have the maid giving her son a bath so we're starting to see in episodes that charity is placing so much time and emphasis into other things that she's spending less and less time with her own son we then see Bishop, Charity, and Jacob. They're in a room, and Jacob is wondering why, you know, we're having this meeting. It's something clearly that uh, Bishop or Grace wants to talk about, and they're going back and forth with the tip for tap. And Jacob says to Charity, is there anything that you want to mention? Is there something that you want to say? And she's like, well, no, you know, what are you insinuating? And he's just like trying to get her to confess about things that she's been doing with Phil, but she doesn't bite the bullet. So we then see Grace enter the room and they're all together to have a meeting. And Grace tells everybody, you know, it's really strange that Phil sends me this information and he wants to have a meeting with me concerning parking lot space because it's evident that we're running out of room from all of these so-called new attendants that we've been having in church and she says I just think it's really interesting and it's just so sneaky and something isn't right about Phil and Charity takes instant insult about it and says well I wouldn't say that about Phil he seems to be a great guy and Jacob says well why are you going into this situation he told me to leave and he fired me from the church and Charity says well that's your fault it's something that you did you hurt somebody else and he says those injuries came from me breaking up a fight and they quickly try to disperse it and Grace and Bishop are just like you know just cut it out let's just cut it out and talk and they're really just questioning why are you defending Phil it comes off as if you don't know what harmony and hope is doing to the church and she says well i see him as a brother in christ and we shouldn't attack him and maybe we should just per se go with the flow of what's happening with the church so they don't understand why she's just so biased to the situation and taking up for feel as if he's just such a good friend of the family Bishop can calm that down he says look I've called you in here for this meeting because I'm thinking about asking your mother to marry me and I really want you guys to sing a song just like how you did a while ago and if you sing this song I think this will put her in good spirits enough to say yes so don't say anything keep it hush hush but as he's telling them this Lady May hears them talking she hears her name mentioned or something that has to deal with her and she starts to eavesdrop and unfortunately hears this news that he's planning to propose to her. Marissa is head over heels for Fernando and she's in his office still spilling her guts about experiences with Jacob and her family and how she just feels silent and 
voicing her opinions and how she's felt over the years. And Fernando seems to listen to her, but he's still inquiring about why she's moving, why not stay in the Greenleaf house. And it seems to be such a great house. And also he inquired, if something were to happen to Lady May or the Bishop, who would get that land? Who would get that home? And she says, well, I mean, that's a good question. I really don't know. And he tells her, you know, you really should find out that information. And that's something that I really need to know. She's so in awe about it. She considers it and she lets the information go in one ear. And instead of it going out the other, it sticks into her brain. And they gush over each other. And she talks about how she's so excited to go to their secret hotel place where they share their intimate moments together and they continue to gush and she says I need you to tell me that instead of waiting for us to go to the hotel that you want me now and you've got to have me now and so we've got to leave now so he says well let me tell the assistant she can leave and we'll go from there. Perrin calls Lady May to inform her that Misty has submitted a topic to discuss during the Deacon meeting that they want her name removed from the scholarship. She wants to know why and she says, you know, that's something for you to talk to Misty about, but we can make a good conclusion that they want her name removed because of all of the situations that happened with her brother. Jacob lets the cat out of the bag to Charity to let her know, hey, I know what's going on. I saw you and Phil kissing because I had to go back up to the church to get all of my stuff out of the office. So I saw you guys kissing. What's going on? And Charity seems to withhold a little bit. She doesn't even think that she needs to explain herself. And he says, it's either one or four of these things. Either he forced himself upon you, you love him, uh, you're trying to spy on Phil to see if we have information that could help the family or it's something else. And she says, well, it's the second option. I love him. And he says, you know, you got to think about this. You're, you're going after somebody that's attacked our family and wants us out. So are you really sure about that? Are you sure that you love this guy? And she says, look, I know you don't understand it, but I love him. He's not a bad guy. I really have this interest for him. You really need to consider it. In the midst of them going back and forth, Grace comes downstairs to say, okay, what's all of the back and forth? What's going on down here? And Charity gives him that look, like, don't say anything. She wants him to keep it a secret between siblings and saying, hey, this is my endeavor. People are going to perceive this wrong. And he says, well, we're arguing over what song we're going to sing for mom. And Grace says, well, is that why you're arguing? And he says, well, yeah. And Charity gives that look, like, and walks off and Grace says well what's the problem I mean what does she want to sing and he said well she wants to sing reunited and Grace says well what's so bad about that Charity goes to Phil to inform him hey that information that I gave you that recording we can't use that just yet because Jacob saw us in here kissing and he can hold that against us and if anything they'll put two and two together that it was me that gave you the information so hold off on that don't share it and Phil continues to go in to do the Jedi mind trick to convince her that he's in control of the situation and he basically wants to know, are you on my team or are you not on my team? If people figure it out, people figure it out. This is something that we really need. And I'm in it for the long haul. And he's holding her and he's looking into her eyes and he says, you know, are we with each other forever? You know, until the end of time, really pulling her in. And he says, it's up to you. It's your final decision. And this is something that we really need. And Charity falls for the okie doke, of course. Sophia is speaking with AJ. And as she's speaking with AJ, she says, look, if you're innocent, just go back home because you're making the situation worse being here so go ahead and go back home and try to make the best of everything my mom despite it all I really think that she can help you get this situation taken care of and this is the part that I actually found a little comical and a little sloppy on the writing he says well I'm a black man and if I go back that 
they already have in their mind that I'm guilty. So I'm going to get in even more trouble. That's not the comedic part. Which was comedic was when he said, you don't understand because you're a light-skinned, pretty black girl and you don't understand the struggle. But yet, he's a light-skinned man and they look alike. So I was kind of confused on that. Yes, he's still a black man, but... Yeah, the writing was kind of, yeah, it really didn't, yeah. <laughs> it really didn't mesh well right there. And the acting was, I'll go on. I have Nikki, which is Dante's boo, Nikki, Vicky, whatever. She's speaking with Zora, telling her, I can't believe Dante. He says that he won't make a statement because he feels what he did was right and he was standing up for something and he's a fake Colin Kaepernick. And I told them that if he doesn't make a statement and if he doesn't do anything, that I'm going to leave. And and Zora, are you listening to me? And Zora is reading the Bible and she says, yeah, I, I heard you. You said that if he doesn't do what you said and he makes a statement, then you're gonna leave yeah I heard you and she says well I just don't understand why you got your head in that book it's not doing anything for you I'm telling you what's going on and you really don't care so let me just leave and do what I need to do and Zora says you know I just really don't feel that you should leave like this and if that's how you feel then fine then see grace she's speaking with a gentleman who was offered a deal um, from City on a Hill for a lot of land. And he says, look, I don't know what they're doing with it. I don't know what it's for. I don't know what the ultimate goal is. All I know is that they came to me with a very good offer and not just an offer, but it was an offer at top dollar. Jacob wants to speak with Phil ASAP and he goes into Phil's office and he says, I'm not an employee here, so there's nothing that can happen that's HR related which can stop me from what I'm about to do or what I'm about to say. I know about you and Charity and Phil says, okay, so you know about me and Charity, so what's the, what's the big deal? What do you plan on doing? And Jacob proceeds to tell him, I don't care what y'all are doing, I'm here as a brother to let you know she's been through a lot despite everything that's still my sister and if you hurt her that doesn't stop me from wanting to kick your butt so don't hurt my sister and whatever you plan on doing and phil says well i don't plan on hurting your sister so you know this what you're trying to do is pointless and jacob says well that's all i needed to hear that you're not gonna hurt her and you don't plan to Sophia goes into AJ's bag because she wants to give him some cash. He, even though he still wants to leave and do his own thing and he doesn't want to go back home, she says to herself out loud, well, I'm going to help my brother. And we see her put some money into an envelope and she wants to put it into his bag. When she goes to put it in his bag, she notices the same bag of prescription medicines and she's just really disappointed. And she says, you know, wow, like, I can't believe he lied to me. Sophia, she tells AJ, look, I went into your bag. I was trying to give you some money because you said that you were leaving. And I saw the medicine in your bag, so you did it. And not only that, you had my mother lie for you to cover up your your mishaps and what you're doing. And he says, well, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I took it, you know, what are you going to call and snitch on me now? And she says, you can't keep running from your problems. If you're running from your problems, things are never gonna get settled and nobody can help you. You're just gonna keep running forever. And he tells her, well, she made a decision to cover for me and to say what her story was. It is what it is, I'm out. Lady Maid meets with Misty to see if she can convince her that her name needs to remain on the scholarship. And she tells Lady May, hey, I know you think this is all me, but who actually submitted the endeavor was Vita. And she has every right to want to fight that because she was one of the people that was raped by your brother. So take that up with her. Don't take it up with me. And also a side note, she has every right to do that. So you might want to fall back. Grace goes to City on a Hill to speak with somebody that can talk to her about the land or what's going on. And she sees that Carissa is there. And she says, oh, hey, Carissa, you know, what are you doing here? And she says, well, I had to come here to sign off on some final paperwork for the land. That's all, you know. And she says, oh, well, that's interesting. And I found out that the land that you sold belongs to Harmony and Hope 
or belongs to this corporation and she says well we have every right to sell the land to whom or to whomever and she looks at grace and says well, who do you think you are and so um grace is just she has that look like where is that coming from so it's really evident that Carissa has this puffed up idea of, I don't have to tell you anything, which she doesn't, but it's coming out more and she's becoming more defiant when it comes to her marriage and anybody associated with the Greenleaf family, period. Zora speaks with Bishop about the situation with her and her friend, Vicky, and she says, well, how, how do I know what to do? Do I talk to this to people who, are doing wrong do I try to interfere and Bishop says you know you're gonna have situation with situations with non-believers you can't make somebody do certain things so if they're not listening to you give them time let time take care of the situation and let them come to you if there's anything that they want to discuss with you so the best option is just to wait let her take a breather and just chill out and Zora says so I shouldn't blow up her phone and Bishop says well, whatever that means. Yeah, just give her time and let her come to you, if anything. Grace goes to her brother to see if he can find out any information about this city on a hill. And he says, well, as I'm trying to search for it, it's really hard because it's a shell corporation that owns city on a hill. And they've done a wonderful job with trying to hide it. And he says, oh, well, here's something that I found. City on a hill is owned by Harmony and Hope. And that immediately throws up a red flag for Grace because she knows something is wrong. Why is it that Harmony and Hope on, owns this realty company called City on a Hill? Lady May starts to explain to Vita how much that scholarship meant to her. And her purpose was to help improve the development and the growth of women helping them move forward and get through rough times and make plans for their life, etc. And in no way, shape or form, did she know what her brother was doing and she wasn't aware that the funding was going to situations that were just foul. And Lady May breaks down and says, my father was the same with me as Mac was to you and she breaks down in tears and she makes the suggestion Vita makes the suggestion what you just told me you need to tell that to the deacons and you need to tell that with other people because your experience is very important and Lady May just says well I I've got to go and they say no don't fight this you've got to get this out you've got to tell your story Lady May expresses that that abuse that she went through desensitized her to where she didn't know what her brother was doing. And if it was occurring in front of her, she was so blinded about probably things that were happening right in her face because she did a very, I guess you can say a good job of suppressing her trauma for so long that if her brother was, when her brother was doing it, that she dismissed it and she suppressed it for so long that she honestly didn't know what her brother was doing. Grace walks into a room where Jacob and Charity are going back with a tit for tat. And she says, so Jacob, do you want to tell me why that you guys sold land to Harmony and Hope? And Jacob is blindsided and asking, what are you talking about? She says, so you mean to tell me you had no idea that the land that you sold was going to Harmony and Hope? She said, this is the first time I've heard about this. I don't even know what you're talking about. And she says, well, maybe you should ask Carissa because apparently the land that you guys sold is owned by them. So tell me how you didn't know. And he says, well, let me find out about this. I don't know what's going on. Jacob then proceeds to tell Grace the information about Charity and how Charity and Phil are smooching and going back and forth. And Charity leaves the room because she's upset that Jacob has spilled the beans about her, but Jacob could care less. And Grace says, don't you find it a coincidence that all of the land surrounding the church 
has been purchased by Harmony and Hope. And Charity overhears this in the hallway as she's leaving. So she knows that, hmm, something isn't up. And I might want to take this information to Phil. It's Nikki. <laughs> Nikki shows up to Zora's place and she says, well, I told Dante that if he couldn't make a statement that I was going to leave him and he kicked me out. And Zora's just like, well, you know, are you sure you're going to be okay? And she's like, well, yeah, and I don't have anywhere else to go. And he kicked me out, and I guess I just got to find my way. And Zora says, well, you can stay here. And Nikki says, well, I had a feeling you would say that, and I just so happened to pack a bag. And Zora says, well, make yourself at home. Lady May comes in from a rough day. She hears everybody talking in the house and she's just like, whatever's going on, I don't even want to know. And Bishop's so upset because he was expecting Lady May to walk in and they were going to sing a song and he was going to do this proposal, but it unraveled and it didn't go as planned. She goes into the closet. Lady May goes into the closet and she just sits on the ground from just emotional exhaustion. And Bishop says, I would ask you about your day, but I'm not sure if you want to talk about it or tell me that it's none of my business. And she kind of gives him a hint of what she's gone through. And she says, look, I know what you were planning on doing. And Bishop's just like, which one of the kids told you? Because this was supposed to be a secret. And she says, no, just call it ladies intuition. And she says, know that you proposing and you asking me specifically isn't as important as the answer that I want to give to you. And they embrace in a hug and she says yes. And he makes it known makes it known that he wants to marry her again and she says yes and he gives her such an endearing hug and they share a moment sitting on the floor because the moment seemed to be perfect and that we are getting together and we are joining together again and agreeing on this in one of the most treacherous, traumatic, sad moments. So it was a really, really good scene to see that even though things were unraveling and things weren't going as planned, that they wanted to reunite. Jacob goes into the bedroom where Carissa is and he wants to confront her, but she's asleep and their son is in the bed with her. So he decides not to say anything and she she wakes up and she says, well, you know, hey, where have you been? And he's just like, oh, you know, what's our son doing in the bed? And she said, well, he had a bad dream, so he's in here with me. And Jacob says, well, you know, he kicks and he sleeps wild and he moves all about. So I'll just sleep in his bed. And before he can leave the room, Krista says, well, I love you. And he's just like, mm, okay. <laughs> because he already has a good feeling something ain't right. Charity, she goes to feel, of course, and she says, please explain to me why Harmony and Hope is owning all of the land surrounding the church. What's going on with that? Because you told me that you're Bob, Bob Whit Whitfield, so Whitmore, <laughs> excuse me. So how are you not aware of what's going on? And he says, well, I don't know what's going on. And he seems to be very angry that he didn't know about this information. Sophia calls her mom to tell her, I was trying to give AJ some money. I know I said I didn't know where he was, but he was there with me and I was trying to help him out and cover for him, but he made the decision to leave. And before he could leave, I wanted to give my, my brother some money and I went into his bag and I found the prescription pills. And mama, AJ, he's guilty, he did it. And then the episode ends. We only have three episodes left. <laughs> and once again, I'm disappointed in not only the acting, but the script. It's kind of getting all over the place. It is entertaining still. Don't get me wrong. It's very entertaining. But there were a lot of things in this episode that were not fluid at all. So... Sophia says that AJ's guilty. I found these prescription drugs in his bag. But as I said in the last review, the medicine that's in his bag doesn't match the medicine that was on the security footage. So if he did do it, if they're writing it as if AJ is guilty, it's not fluid at all. And it doesn't match up to him being guilty and him saying, well, yeah, it was me. She lied for me. 
that was her decision. Re that really wasn't too fluid. And I was just like, really? Uh, uh, okay. Also, I noticed that when Charity told Phil, you know, hey, you guys are buying up all this land and how could you not know that? I noticed that Phil seemed to be angry that he didn't know this information. So my concern is, are the writers turning it around to where Phil will be a good guy? That he's finding out he's being played too? So will he help the Greenleaf family? It's so predictable. And then I predict that that is how Phil's character will transition. Since he knows everything about Harmony and Hope, will he be the key to helping the Greenleaf family take back ownership because he's been portrayed by Bob and that he doesn't know all of the information. So is that the direction there? Predictable, and I think that's gonna happen. It's very possible because he looked upset about it as if there was some betrayal. I'm doing all of the work over here. I'm doing what you told me to do and you're not keeping me afloat of what you're doing. That's what I think what will happen. Also with Nikki and Zora, I think that's pretty predictable there. In the other review, there was one episode where I said that Nikki had some type of sexual tension with Zora and that it's possible that there may be lesbian -S suggestions with Nikki and Zora. So now that Nikki is staying with Zora, I think that might happen. They'll share that energy and something will happen between those two characters. Once again, everything is so rushed and smushed together to where it's just quick, 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 being soap opera-esque. Since we only have three episodes left, I just think the last three episodes are very predictable. Everything that's happened, especially in this episode that just went off, I'm not surprised because I've predicted it, I've said it, that this might happen, that might happen. Um, not disappointed that I might be wrong that AJ is guilty and those of the prescription drugs because several of you said, oh, bunny, notice that though he has pres prescription drugs in his bag and he did it. It just, it doesn't seem fluid because like I said before, it doesn't match what's in the surveillance at all. Um, it shows it to be in prescription bottles, but in the video, they are stock bottles. So if he did do it, they didn't write that too well and it just looked sloppy. The acting was terrible. <laughs> and the gentleman that plays AJ, the acting is absolutely terrible. The young lady who plays the character of Nikki, the acting is absolutely terrible. It's only the seasoned actors that are pulling the strings and lifting the weak leaks up to help with the acting. But if it's getting soap opera-esque and it's go, 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 it doesn't matter at this point. Let me know what you think. It's still entertaining. I'm still going to watch because I'm already invested in the show and I'm not going to stop mid-season. So I'm going to keep going because I want to see how this season ends. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. For those of you who are new to the channel, I encourage you to describe and subscribe. And if you don't notice, I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. Follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. I'll see you later. Bye.